stopped doing my behavioral Prozac, and to my surprise, I didn't fall apart. My life didn't fall apart. I, I was okay, and I, I actually even had this weird sense for a while of not knowing what to do with myself, because I hadn't realized how much of my time was taken up with trying to be okay. And I found myself with an incredible amount of free time. And, and I, hadn't, I just didn't know, and I felt almost like empty, like, like something was missing. People go, are you okay? And I go, yeah. And they go, well, what's wrong? And I go, nothing. And, and it was like I'd lived with background anxiety and depression for so long. When it was gone, I, I suddenly noticed it. Whereas when it was always there, like living in the city, if you live in a city, you don't notice the noise after a while. Like I lived in a city in my head for so long that when I suddenly moved to the country, it was, it was, the quiet was really loud. And I, I, honestly, I played a lot of video games. <laughs> like I just had all this time. And then I got depressed again. And it came out of the blue and it was, probably a year and a half, two years after I had that sort of epiphany. And my first thought was, oh no, it's back. But something interesting happened. I noticed that it came and went. I noticed that it wasn't a steady state. I noticed that even though I was feeling that kind of dead feeling, that sort of wrapped in cotton wool feeling, that sort of walking underwater feeling that I associated with depression, I was okay. It was almost like my body was going through it, but I was still okay. And I'd never had that experience before. And in that place, I, I suddenly had a whole different understanding of depression that emerged. Because I started to see that my depression was how I coped with anxiety. And that had never occurred to me before. And I was trying to explain it to somebody, and the metaphor that came to mind was a hairdryer. Now, I travel a lot for my work, so I, I, I use a lot of hotel hairdryers, and all hotel hairdryers I've ever seen have an overheating switch, something in them where if it gets too hot, if you run it for too long, it switches off for a while until it cools enough to be safely used. And I realized that the way I was using my mind innocently, inadvertently, was I was running so much anxious thinking about everything all the time that my mind would overheat. And the coping mechanism of the mind was to switch off completely, to just shut down. And the experience of that, the feeling of that, was what I was calling depression. And I suddenly saw for the first time, oh my God, this is me, this is my health. Trying to, trying to help me in the same way, by the way, that your physical body does that. Most things we think of as physical illnesses are the body's attempts to get back to health. So when you throw up, it's your body trying to expel toxins. When your nose gets all stuffed up with a cold, it's trying to block the toxins from getting in there. When you have a fever, it's trying to burn off the toxins. Well, when you're depressed, it's your mental system, it's your mental health trying to cool the system down so that you can start back up fresh. And when I saw that, I think that was the first time I stopped being scared of depression. Because I suddenly saw, oh my goodness, this is actually part of my mental health. Now, I still didn't like it, but it was okay. Now, here's what was interesting. As soon as I wasn't scared of it, I got smart. Right, in the same way as when I was in that room in the infirmary at college and I got quiet for a minute and I suddenly knew what I needed. When I wasn't scared of depression anymore, I suddenly knew what to do. And in that particular instance, I went to, a, I was just drawn to a particular doctor and, and, and it was interesting because we actually did a, a serotonin test, a neurotransmitter test, and, and I had told the doctor, I said, look, I'm a little embarrassed that I'm depressed because I had this epiphany and I thought I totally had licked this and, and you know, I was doing so well and, and, and it, 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 I was kind of embarrassed. And she said, she had the neurotransmitter results said and said, no, your neurotransmitter levels are so low that you should be dead. So whatever you're doing is, is doing something for you. And so we did some stuff to boost my neurotransmitters and, and it was fine, but I knew to do that. That might not have been what somebody else needed. That might not have been what I would need if I found myself there again now. But I knew that was what I needed then. I was present to it because I wasn't scared of it. I was able to look, look it in the eye 
because I saw it was my own health. It was my own attempt at getting back to this innate mental health. And, and there was something about that that I, to this day, I'm just not scared of it anymore. And to this day, and this is now, gosh, how many years on are we? I, you know, we're more than 10 years on from that. I, I just haven't had a whiff of it. And if it did come back, that'd be okay. Because I do think that, you know, maybe for whatever reason, my genetics, my brain chemistry, I might be a little bit more predisposed to it than some other people. But that's okay. A predisposition is not a disease. Your health is not an illness. And for me, when I started to see that, when I stopped being scared, I got quieter.